When you think about these Baltimore Ravens, you think about all the different special players that they have on this roster. Obviously, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, even though he ain't going over in two weeks, uh, Ronnie Stanley, Tyler Linderbaum. The list goes on. Then you go to the defensive side of the ball. Adafe away. Super Duper Kyle. And then Super Duper Kyle 2.0. Marlon Humphrey. Nate Wiggins. Look like he coming into his own. And the list goes on. Matt Abike. There's a job. Oh, Travis Jones been killing it. The Ravens got some nice pieces on both sides of the ball. But guess what? They ain't even fully healthy yet. They are missing some key guys and some guys who were key contributors last year. They ain't played a snap of Ravens football all season yet. But as of today, as of this week, those guys that have been MIA for different reasons, they are eligible to come back this week. Not saying that they will, but they are eligible to. The guys that I'm referring to, well, one of them is Rasheen Ali. Uh, he's eligible to come off an injury reserve. But Keaton Mitchell, he is eligible. Not saying that he's coming back, but he is eligible to come off the physically unable to perform list this week. So that would be a nice surprise if he does. I don't think we should be expecting him to. Not quite yet. I, th I think we still got a little ways to go. We remember when he put out the tweet a couple of weeks ago, he said it feels real nice to be able to hit 20 miles per hour again. So that lets us know that he is running and he's healthy, but maybe he's not all the way healthy. So we'll be patient with Keaton Mitchell. We'll hold it down while we wait for you. But one person who is being deemed healthy enough to start his comeback, one person that was a big contributor to the Baltimore Ravens last season, Arthur Millette. And we saw Arthur Millette. We saw him on the sideline uh, of the game yesterday standing right behind Harbaugh. He just looked ready. He, he's actually looked like he's been ready to come back for weeks now when you see him on the sideline at the games. But Arthur Millette, Harbaugh said it today that with Arthur Millette, uh, he will practice this week. He's eligible to return. So that is such a beautiful thing, especially when you think about the possibilities of the Baltimore Ravens defense and games like they played last night where they actually play a full four quarters of defense, where they make the proper adjustments. You got the personnel right. You think about the quality of depth. Like, think about this. What we saw last night, we saw Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, and Nate Wiggins. Those are your starting cornerbacks. Marlon Humphrey, for a brief period, he went out for a little bit. We were like, okay, what's up with Marlon Humphrey? But then we were like, oh, no, he, he, he'll be straight. And then he ended up coming back. But while he went out, Darius Washington – he came in, and all Darius Washington, he ain't no slouch. That man can play. Like, all there, every time he is on the field, all Darius Washington looks great. He looks phenomenal. But then you think about it, you think, oh, then they could get, all, no, no, excuse me, not they can get, they will get, we are going to get Arthur Millette back too. So now this secondary, that's already pretty good. The, the, the only issue with the secondary is when they have these mental lapses. They have these hiccups. They make these mistakes. And Eddie Jackson's been, <laughs> he's been making quite a few mistakes so far. But he's just getting used to the swing of things. He's just getting used to the Baltimore Ravens. He'll get it together. He will. But um, you think about their secondary and, and, and how good they already were without an Arthur Millette. But now you add him to the mix too. Like the depth is insane man it really is and we saw with Zach Orr we, 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 we saw some flashes of Mike McDonald there because last night we saw super duper Kyle he would be blitzing sometime but then we saw uh, Marlon Humphrey where they turned him into a blitzer again and we, we missed that like because when Marlon Humphrey blitzes it comes out of nowhere because they don't be having him blitz like crazy like that. So when he does it, it's a nice surprise. And it looks good. Marlon Humphrey is a good blitzing cornerback. But you know who else is too? Arthur Millette. So you know when, when, when Arthur Millette gets back, like that just adds another element and another layer to this Baltimore Ravens defense that can be – they got the potential to be so good. They really, really – like – if last night ain't show you that, but against Josh Allen, again, this Josh Allen-led Buffalo Bills team every single game this season, they have scored at least 31 points. 31 points is the lowest amount of points that they had scored, of course, before last night in any game this season, and the Baltimore Ravens held them to 10, 10 points. 
And the only reason that they got that touchdown was because Eddie Jackson got caught slipping. And, and, and it happens. It happens. So it's cool. But Ravens defense was doing that th- against Josh Allen, one of the best in the game. So now with Arthur Millette coming back, ooh, 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 that could make them that much better, that much stronger, and the quality and the insanity of the depth is going crazy. One of the biggest topics of conversation all offseason and for the early part of this regular season, too, was Baltimore Ravens offensive line. And my goodness, in them first couple of games, it was scary, man. We were thinking, oh, my goodness, how is this season going to go? If the offensive line is playing like that, then that's a huge yikes. But these past two games, we've been seeing something different. We've been seeing some changes. We've been seeing some adjustments in a couple of different ways when it comes to the offensive line. Uh, In the game against the Cowboys, something that I noticed was not only the offensive line playing better, but the play calling was better for them. It was quick passes. It was obviously plenty of runs with Derrick Henry. They made the offensive line's job a lot easier. And then you see last night's game. It was a couple of things. It was the play calling in them being super, super run heavy, allowing those offensive linemen to do what they do. Just go find somebody and knock them out. But it was also a change because, remember, Andrew Voorhees, he was hurt. So they brought Pat McCarry from right tackle, put him at left guard, and then they had Roger Rosengard and the rookie starting at right tackle. But somebody who – and you hear NFL players say this every single year. Oh, this is the healthiest I felt my whole career. We hear them say that all the time. So somebody who we heard say that this offseason, it was Ronnie Stanley. And when he said that, I'm like, oh, okay, he's probably just talking. But – I don't think he was just talking, my friends. Ronnie Stanley has been amazing this year. Even when he was getting okie-doked in that week one game against the Kansas City Chiefs by the referees. They kept trying to try him. They kept trying to aggravate him. They kept saying, Ronnie, you lined up wrong. But anyway, Ronnie Stanley, um, this was the pass block win rate leaders for the season at tackle. Number one. So he's when it comes to pass blocking. He's winning when it comes to pass blocking the most in the entire, not the entire AFC North, not the entire AFC, but the entire NFL. Number one is Ronnie Stanley. Number one, it's Ronnie Stanley. He has the best, the highest pass block win rate in the league. So he is really holding it down for Lamar Jackson big time. Big time. So shout out to him. And I thought it was interesting. The other names on this list was one Lane Johnson, but the other one was Orlando Brown. I said, oh, that homegrown Raven. Look at him. He started with us. We the ones that raised him up. Uh, but, of course, yeah, he went to the Chiefs and the Bengals and all. Y'all know the rest of the story. And then uh, Panay Sewell and Trent Williams. So that's some good company to be with. But it's nice that Ronnie Stanley is all the way at the top. Uh, the offensive line, they have been obviously been a work in progress. New guys, new starters playing at new positions and whatnot. But they're coming together. They're coming together. Uh, something that one of my guys, he just pointed out to me. To see, he said he really appreciated how not only John Harbaugh, he really stuck up for his offensive line, especially when they were struggling a couple weeks ago, but the way Lamar Jackson did as well. Because, uh, you know, us fans, we were talking about the offensive line a lot. And in my opinion, I feel like we had every right to, of course, in a respectful way. Now, I don't know disrespectful, man. If you were being disrespectful about it, then I disagree with you. But if you were criticizing them respectfully, then I can get with that. Because it was bad. It was rough. It, it was all kinds of bad. But over these past couple of weeks, we saw so much improvements uh, with the offensive line um, that you got to give them that credit, man. You got to give them a huge shout out and, and got to give them their kudos because they have been really holding it down and they've been opening lanes for Derrick Henry to take off uh they just been clearing the way for Lamar Jackson if he felt like taking off uh they've been giving him time like yesterday he had a good amount of time against the Bills pass rush that's pretty good Bills defense that's overall pretty good well at least he thought but the offensive line has been doing an amazing job I remember Lamar Jackson I think last week he just uh gave public praise to Daniel Filele and Filele was somebody who received a whole lot of criticism. And you know, Lamar sees that stuff on Twitter and stuff. And plenty of people see it. Um, plenty of people hear it. But Daniel Filele, he has bounced back. He's had a huge bounce back season just after four games. Because the first two, it was rough. It was rough. But they stuck with him. They stuck with the process. And again, 
there were some changes made and some adjustments made, but he's looked much better. And just really the entire offensive line. This is why I say, like, Ravens, they have to stick with the offensive line that they had yesterday. They got to stick with it. Now, you, you can make a decision between Patrick McCarry, a left guard, or Andrew Voorhees, but don't change anything else, in my opinion. Leave everything else as is. Roger Rosengarden, that's pretty much a first round. He playing like a first round pick, in my opinion. Like you ain't, you ain't, hear, you ain't really hear nothing out of him. I think they, they might have called one penalty again, but you ain't really hear nothing out of Roger Rosengarden. That's a good thing for an offensive lineman. You don't want to be hearing the name called over and over and over and over. No, you don't want that. So I would say leave him at right tackle. Leave him there. Daniel Filele, leave him at right guard. Obviously, Tyler Linda bomb, but and then obviously Ronnie Stanley too. But at left guard, I would say Pat McCarty, especially after yesterday's game. But I can see them going back to forth. But I, I would leave everything as is because I don't want to fix something that's not broken. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you would like to take part in this, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can just send a message directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, go to patreon.com slash Vids. If you don't want to, it's all good. Special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean channel members. We just dropped some new emojis for y'all to use in the comment section. So all the Team Keep It Clean channel members, y'all check that out when you get a chance and let me know how it goes for you. Now, first question. Well, I guess this looks more so like a comment. It came from my guy Justino, uh, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, just want to say uh, I'm happy to be a patron, uh, happy to be a part of Team Keep It Clean. Just wanted to send you this little message. Hey, man, Justino, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I, that's that's uh, I, I appreciate that, that positivity, and I'm happy that you're happy. So that makes all of us happy. Next question came from my guy, Kyan. He said, what's up, brothers? Kyan, hope all is well. I made a remark in the comments of the live stream. I just wanted to back up with some facts, but it is from two years ago, so we have to take context into this. All right, let's see what you're talking about. Purple on white, we 15 and 4, 79%. Purple on black, we 4 and 0, 100%. Purple on purple, we 1 and 1, that's 50%. Black on black, six and O. Oh. Black on white, one and two. Uh, black on purple, two and O. Oh. Color rush, two and one. White on black, seven and two. White on white, two and four. White on purple, 12 and two. Ooh. He said, any jersey on white, 16 and 10. Any jersey on black, 17 and two. <laughs> Let me keep going. Anyway, any jersey on purple, 15 and three. Lamar Jackson's win percentage drops by over 20% when he wears white pants. Specifically, white on white is one of his worst win rates at 33%. I say, wear all black all the time or definitely stay away from all white, especially those white pants, LOL. Hey, look, if they can wear them black jerseys all the time, that would be great. But NFL, they won't allow that because those are alternate jerseys. So they got like specific rules and stuff where they could wear certain jerseys a certain amount of times. And the black jerseys, they like they limited edition. No questions asked. Next question came from my guy Aaron. He said, hey, man, I hope all is well with you and the family. Everything is really good. I appreciate you. He said, Lamar is an alpha dog. Marlo is a beta dog. The six man O line is made out of trigger trigonometric functions. The integral of the defensive system is Kyle Vinoy. The derivative of it is Kyle Hamilton. No pun intended. Great win, and I hope you have a wonderful week of content. All the best. Let's go, Ravens. Man, you, whew, you, <laughs> you use some words in that one, man. You, man, that's, whoa, okay, like, <laughs> all right. I can tell you love you some math. Next question came from my guy, Martin. He said, I think it's only fair. Whenever you criticize players or coaches, whenever they are doing bad, you always give them props whenever they are doing things well. That's true. I agree. One million percent. One million percent. He said, um, good job, John Harbaugh. He didn't coach scared this game. Now we just need this type of coaching to show up in the playoffs. Boom. Simple as that. Simple as that. Now with John Harbaugh, <laughs> things obviously have been better the past two weeks. Last week was a lot scarier than this week. But uh, John Harbaugh, it, he just he just been getting tricked by the rule book. There's some stuff that he's been getting a little confused by. And I know last night with the, the whole timeouts thing, I think he, he thought that the Bills, they had used timeouts. So he was like, all right, let me use my timeout. But then the rest were like, no, you can't call timeout. And then that ended up giving the Bills their five yards. So they ended up going from fourth and two to a first down, and they didn't even have to work for it. But other than that, like, it was a well 
coached game. And the Baltimore Ravens look something that a lot of times, especially this season, they haven't looked enough of. And that was prepared. That was prepared. Because it's one thing to start off a game good, to start off a game even great on offense, defense, even special teams. Even though special teams just were kicking one. We know. Anyway, but it's one thing to start off the game great. But it's not just about how you start. It's about how you finish as well. And the Baltimore Ravens, they've been prepared in the first half. But second halves, they've been falling flat. The game against the Bills, it was a complete game, the very first complete game of the season. Hopefully, we get many more of them. Anyway, he said, I also uh, want to give a shout-out to some underrated players, in my opinion, who do not get nearly enough credit. Pat Ricard is, an, is amazing. He does everything you ask him to do. He blocks, he receives, he can play defense, he runs on occasion. He made a huge play to recover that fumble. All those bills dove for the ball, and he was still able to get in there and keep the ball from them. That is true. That's, that's something that – so first, shout-out to Harbaugh, like you said. John Harbaugh did his thing yesterday. But, um, yeah, shout-out to Pat Ricard. Uh, that's somebody who we do not talk about enough. Pat Ricard is out there killing it, man. And, yeah, I, I thought that um, when Derrick Henry fumbled, I thought Roger, Roger Rosengarden got it. But he didn't. But Pat Ricard, number 42, he dipped in there. He ended up coming away with the ball. I don't know how, but we wasn't complaining. So shout out to Pat Ricard for saving those seven points because that could have ended up being zero. Especially being on the goal line, too. Ooh, that would have hurt so bad. But that he saved the day. So shout out to him. And then the blocking that he was doing, like clearing the way for Derrick Henry. Oh, what are, what are defense is supposed to do? Well, that ain't our question to answer. He said, Rashad Bateman is starting to find his stride. He doesn't put up sexy numbers. However, he is making the most of the few opportunities he is getting by catching the ball and separating. Ooh, well, last night, was, uh, I mean, it was a holding call, a defensive holding. But that, that still could have been his touchdown because he could have called a touchdown and declined it, but it's, it's okay. Man. Anyway, he said, these next two, I love when the Ravens sign them, and I'm happy that the Ravens retain them, those players being Nelson Aguilar and Kyle Vannoy. Nelson Aguilar has been balling when his numbers have been called recently and breaks tackles, catching the ball, having huge plays, even if he only gets two to three passes thrown his way. Now, with that, the, the, it was a third down pass that he caught last night. Lamar threw a laser, a laser, and Nelson Aguilar went up and got, I don't know how Lamar threw that, I don't know how Nelson Aguilar caught it. But they made that play happen. It was a beautiful thing. And he said, and Kyle Vannoy has been an absolute beast. I want him to retire as a Raven. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Kyle Vannoy. Super Duper Kyle 2.0. Two sacks. He just want to get two sacks every game. Hey, no problem. No problem. This dude got six sacks this season. Kyle Vannoy. He, the man can play. He said, uh, and shout out to Charlie Cole. It's nice to see what he can actually do. I like seeing him more involved. I know it's been a rough uh, statistically for Mark Andrews, but I'm glad he's still out there. Likely has been amazing as well, just making huge go up and get it plays. Some great game, great game, guys. Great game to the defense as well. Shout out to Zach. Or, oh, yeah, special shout out to him because he had them boys ready the whole night. Uh, and he also said, shout out to Justice Hill as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Justice Hill. I mean, you know, New Money Justice, he's been just killing it, man. Every opportunity that he gets, he has been just making so many impact plays throughout these first four games. And, again, it goes back to last year, the past couple of years, but certainly last year was his best year, uh, in my opinion. And this year, he's getting off to an amazing start. So this year, it's looking like it's going to top last year for sure. 